1600 km at higher altitude from earth surface now outer part of exosphere we are calling as magnetosphere but very little known about this certain radiation belts are also so like that different parts of atmosphere uh, especially altitude wise different parts we are going to discuss here now certain other data which is related with this say for example you are aware of northern lights if you have heard about northern lights that from especially higher latitude we are having this type of light observed in sky during night time especially one can observe that is called as aurora borealis suppose you are able to observe this type of light in southern hemisphere then it is called as aurora australis so usually these lights are observed in sky different colors from violet to green different colors one can observe this is probably because a charge uh, when sol, uh, sun is giving certain flares charged particles are thrown away from sun surface part of that is able to enter in earth's atmosphere but earth is also having magnetic field around it and so uh, any charged particle is in motion that is producing magnetic field around it so they automatically get attracted towards north pole and south pole of earth and therefore they get entered in the atmosphere and probably in kilometer wise 100 kilometer height that means in particular to ionosphere and mesosphere region they get discharged they are charged particle they are coming with very high velocity and while entering they give their energy to the gases present over here and then light is produced the excess of energy that is converted in form of light and that's why we are getting this type of light particularly uh, from uh, till 20 degree of magnetic pole so if you are uh, usually in the range of arctic circle say russia norway canada like that countries and antarctic circle near then you can able to observe this type of light that is called as aurora borealis in northern hemisphere whereas aurora australis is in southern hemisphere so particular this region where 100 km height is there this region is important the lights are produced at that height and observed brightly from earth obviously i not visited that area but on youtube certain videos of this aurora borealis and aurora australis are there you can just check out you can get feel that what is the exact idea of these northern lights i to concentrate on insulation and heat budget the first thing what is insulation so actually sun is radiating energy all over the surface of sun but out of that say for example this is sun whereas energy is radiation in all possible direction here here because this is spherical in shape whereas this is the size of earth suppose so only this much portion if one can say or rather in this way we can say from other parts so only this much energy is able to receive on earth surface so that is total whatever the energy given out by sun out of that 2000 million you are aware of million no million means what i have to into 10 to the power of 6 so only that much part of energy we are able to receive so keep in mind whatever energy is radiated by sun out of that we are able to receive only this much energy but whatever the total energy received on earth that we are calling as insulation so from all this part of sun whatever the radiations are coming to the earth surface that we are calling as insulation now the thing is that atmosphere is not able to absorb long waves uh, sorry short waves uh, so first we have to discuss what is long wave and short wave 
for that purpose uh, there is one simple thing you have to go to our physics lectures the beginning lectures where we are discuss about spectra if you are aware of that all right otherwise just uh, in short i am giving you here so try to recollect gamma rays are having shortest wavelength after gamma there is number of x then we are calling as vacuum ultraviolet then we are calling as ultraviolet then violet so from violet to red this range we are calling as visible range after red there is infrared far infrared then microwaves and radio waves usually here with this reference we are calling these waves as long wave radiations and these waves as short wave radiation so sun is giving out almost all spectrum whereas we are not able to uh, say uh, receive all this in atmosphere atmosphere is not able to absorb all so for example you are aware that stratosphere is there that is having ozone layers so that is absorbing part of uv not 100% but part of uv is absorbed by that so like that different radiations are absorbed whereas gamma rays are having just range of 10 to 12 cm in atmosphere so they get absorbed in upper parts of atmosphere but remaining this short waves they are not absorbed directly in atmosphere so gamma rays x rays they are absorbed but ultraviolet not all and visible range not at all they are just passed out till surface because they are uh, one can say the atmosphere is not opaque for them and therefore these radiations are coming to the earth surface now when these radiations are coming out to earth surface earth surface is absorbing them as well as reflecting them two things are carried out simultaneously for example uh, the color of surface is very important here one can say suppose black soil is there as we are calling of regur type of soil that is having black color so black color that indicate almost all radiations are absorbed whereas if you are talking of himalayan part particularly with india or ice caps present on north pole and south pole then the radiations are reflected back because as that land is covered by ice and especially north pole there is no land there is only ice so that is absorb uh, that is reflecting out almost all radiations uh, i am not telling you that that's why these regions are cold actually the regions are cold therefore there is ice but because of this snowfall or ice cap the radiations are reflected to greater extent whereas uh, that's why heating decreases because of this radiation land is absorbing say so what are the percentage of depend on color of land the percentage of light is absorbed by land because of this absorption of radiation land get heated and that hot land now emit radiation that is in form of this type of radiation we are calling this as long wave radiation so keep in mind any hot body hot body definition is temperature should be greater than minus 273 degree celsius if temperature of body is greater than minus 273 degree celsius then we are calling that body as hot body try to recollect our space lectures then we have discussed this type of uh, substances they are able to emit radiations that is in range of ir infrared usually we are calling thermal imaging or thermal imaging also we are using this same radiation as infrared radiations so this is the radiation emitted by this body so minus 273 degree celsius if temperature is greater than minus 273 degree celsius then we are calling that as hot substance so ice is comparatively very very hot because ice is having temperature maximum in the range of 0 degree celsius now keep in mind that whenever this type of temperature we are having temperature greater than minus 273 degree celsius then that is capable of emitting this type of radiation they are called as long radiation so same way land is also emitting this radiation and 
uh, atmosphere, particularly carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, and other certain gases are there. They are able to absorb this long wave, uh, long wave radiation. The result of this absorption of long wave radiation is that the substance, the atmosphere, get heated. So keep in mind that there is warm weather or climate or there is rising temperature of atmosphere that is not because they are directly absorbing radiation instead of that so this is land this is layer of atmosphere radiations are coming out like that so because of radiation this type of incoming radiation that we are calling as insulation so because of insulation the land is not going to become hot but when this is absorbed by land and then reflected back in long wave then that is absorbed in atmosphere the gases responsible mainly their water vapors carbon dioxide and other gases like methane etc keep in mind many people are uh, threatening because of uh, greenhouse effect and uh, they are naming these gases as greenhouse gases so one can reduce out pollution of carbon dioxide this is very very important fact that one should reduce the pollution of carbon dioxide that we can uh, say yes right but how we can control our water vapors at so many part of earth is covered by water bodies we are calling this as hydrosphere we are not having any control over this hydrosphere and further about the carbon dioxide emission as a rise in carbon dioxide level is there as well as we are having mechanism that decrease in carbon dioxide level is also possible the water is best source that absorbs carbon dioxide water absorbs carbon dioxide and converted into carbonic acid h2co3 is formed in sea many uh, part of that absorbs co2 are precipitated usually in form of uh, say calcium carbonate like that precipitation is also possible so large amount of carbon dioxide is absorbed in sea water so uh, for global warming it is not necessary that only greenhouse effect or like that carbon dioxide increasing proportion is required otherwise certain questions are unanswer unanswerable here like we are having ice ages on earth between two ice ages there is certainly rising temperature and for long ice ages there was no evidence of human and that's why we should not say that only man is responsible or this type of pollutants are responsible uh, for more detail we can check out certain data the rise in amount of carbon dioxide and rising temperature from 1946 to almost 1975 the rise in carbon dioxide level was very high but in this particular period the temperature was decreasing can you call this as global cooling instead of warming so not only we are responsible as we are saying that we don't have any control over this universe we are having just control over certain parts of earth not 100% on earth and therefore this type of discussion is actually not that much useful anyway so this way radiated gases uh, radiated heat is absorbed by this type of gases now we have to talk of this thing say what are the insulation insulation means light coming from sun that is called as insulation so what are the insulation is there how it is reflected back in the space let us check out the first thing whatever gases are present over there they are reflecting out the instant uh, instantaneous radiation so 35% heat or 35% radiations are reflected back why 35% radiations are reflected back because of atmosphere the second thing you are aware that there is stratosphere which is consisting of ozone layer ozone layer is tend to absorb certain uv keep in mind all uv's are not absorbed by uh, that ozone layer 
or that is called as ozonosphere. But harmful ultraviolet radiations are absorbed by ozonosphere. So because of that, there is rising temperature of atmosphere. That's why you will find that in case of stratosphere, temperature rises from almost minus 60 to 0 degree Celsius. The rise is of 60 degree Celsius. Now next part, that radiations are reaching towards Earth. Say 14% radiations are absorbed in atmosphere. So in short, one can say that 35% radiation get reflected back by atmosphere. Out of 35%, uh, sorry, out of total insulation, 14% is absorbed by atmosphere. So just make out total, you will get 49. So now 49% are absorbed in atmosphere, whereas remaining amount that is 51%. That 51% is reach out till earth surface. Now earth surface absorb all 51% and reflected back all 51%. Not directly, in form of long waves or uh, short waves also. So, what are reflected back, out of that, 17% is escaping to space. As 17% are unabsorbed by atmosphere. They are just passed out straight away to space. Whereas, 34% get absorbed by atmosphere. That is... Uh, I should not use the word actually percent over here, but as we are saying 51%, consider that 51% only, then out of, or rather we can use the word unit. So suppose 35 units are reflected by 14 units are absorbed. So total 49 units are absorbed. Then 51 units are reach at earth surface whereas out of that 51 the 17 units get absorbed by uh, sorry 17 units gets reflected back to the space whereas 34 units get absorbed by atmosphere so it is a total here again 51 unit that is the total that we are giving split now out of that 34 is we have to add over here because atmosphere is absorbing 14% and uh, from insulation and 34% from uh, radiated by earth. So total atmosphere is receiving 14 plus 34. So that gives total of 48. Now 48 units are reflected back in the space by atmosphere. Uh, reflected back by atmosphere in the space. So here we are getting 48 units get reflected back from atmosphere. Now 35 units are reflected back by atmosphere whereas the 17 units get radiated by earth surface that is also going in space. So so 52 units are given by space. Net total 48 plus 52, you are getting 100. So if 100 units are incoming, then 100 units are outgoing. And this way, the heat budget is called because we are balancing out. So whatever the radiations coming out, that means insulation, that is sent back to space. So this is basic idea. That whatever the sun is giving us energy, that energy is practically transferred again back in the space and there is no rise and no fall in the temperature of earth because of solar energy.